Hello. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming to the first iteration of Feelings, which is a pop-up series by Whenever We Feel Like It, um, which is a subdivision of Sleepy Lemur Quality Enterprises. And I'm really excited to be welcoming Ted Reese today. Um, he's going to read from his work, lead us through a craft session. And that's what it's going to be. I don't want to talk for too much because I'm really excited to hear Ted's poems in this space with all of you. So here is Ted Reese. So, kind of, I, I thought for a second like that I was going to like read um, like other people's poems as well, and then I realized that would just take way too long. But I did bring all of my books. So I thought that I would shout out to people via um, showing you the books that I brought. So um, we have Lynn Hoginian's Writing is an Aid to Memory, uh, Jay Gordon Fahler's People Skulk. Um, this is not poetry, but it's about poetics. That's uh, Cian, Cian Nye's Ugly Feelings, uh, Carrie Edwards's Bharat Jiva. Peter Culley's Parkway, uh, Clint Burnham's Pound at Guantanamo, uh, Robert Maisel's uh, Karlamov's Ankle, which is a novel, not poetry, but approaches poetry. Um, I'm actually reading that one right now. It's pretty amazing. Denny Smith by Robert Gluck. Uh, Lisa Robertson's Magenta Soul Whip. Uh, Ogress Oblage by Dorothy Trujillo Lusk, Pink Steam by Dodie Bellamy, Sybil Unrest by Larissa Lai and Rita Wong, Lip Service by Bruce Andrews, and finally, oh wait, I got one wrong, sorry. Rumored Place, <laughs> they're by the same press, that's why I got them wrong. Rumored Place by Rob Halpern, and then Ogress Oblage by Dorothy Trujillo Lusk. So that's kind of like, I make people read these books all the time, and um, but yeah, if you have questions about them or want to know more about them, feel free to ask. Um, okay. Um, so uh, thank you, Michelle and Kelly Writers House, for having me. It's really nice to be here. Um, I'm going to read a short section from uh, a book of mine that is coming out um, in April. That's uh, my second book. Um, and it's called Thanksgiving. Uh, it's a long poem that, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it's a long poem that consists of 498 interlinked haiku. Um, and <laughs> uh, the story behind that is a uh, one that I couldn't tell, but um, this, uh, this publication um, called Social Text published a section of it um, in this past May, uh, and so I'm going to read a little section there, and then I'm going to read some of the new uh, work that I've been uh, working on. So I'll probably read for like 24 minutes or so, and then we'll kind of get into it. Sound good? Yeah? Nice. <clears throat> okay. The proposal came, noisome ideology of cities plopped down in cities. How cool. Let me lay here in the sun until my dream's done, feeling mellow and the hills are on fire. Focus grouped epilation, crawling toddler-like, AC chilled purgatory, a drive-through order. I listened to way too much punk rock as a kid and reside there still in part, so easy a tell, this poem's rough attempt at starting a pit, a crazed whirl masking highly ordered behaviors of intimacy equilibrium, a critique of dominance while sucking it off, the far harbor of tongue, both an imposition and imposed upon. My awesome wish list, a color without a logo, tattooed guillotine, the dancing flambeau, naked pesto slip and slide. These are normal things. What's abnormal is the taste is gonna move you whether you like it or no. He slipped and fell right down on his fat news flash, stretching the canvas to shreds. They're us, that's all. Bugs and drag and I run away together, 
evening turned rain. Never recover from all of the lights. That's discomposure, brassy triumphal tunage, a cavern of false. I'm looking into the moistest superlative availed us today. It needs be squishy by deaf housed in conventions and double yellows. Yeah, I like to dive round in it like a porpoise, shining divider collection. Focus. A regional brew pub chain's dirty taps exposed. Toyota outrage on the new Bluetooth headsets, blood on seat covers. Toss the garbage, kid. Roll the window back up. This is it, boys. It's war. Where'd you grab your voice? It's as if a myth rang up. The rich man sprang in the dirt carriageway, tipping the cart and killing the hacker this morn. The trouble with lads. Our wounds are foul and fester. There is no healing. There is no shortening of the commute, peons to forthright dream cloture and broadened embeds of a gouged mess of supposed entry requirements. We're talking class, sure, and we're all trying to eat, and it's difficult. But pause the game, bro, and kill your uncle. You know, the one with HD TVs on all walls a rust-covered, disused grill, a trip to Vegas every quarter now, silent cousins and your aunt's downcast eyes. He laughs and slurps and sings songs regarding a liberty he can't really want since his breath remains. The Rousseauian cone reeks more each year in bloom. My lens is altered. I think of how hilarious the temporal fold we inhabit here. I'm injected with poison that murdered four friends in this year's vapor, villain in this mass crisis, and I moan awake to what? More bad news. Under the bridges shaking north and east of then, someone you know coughs. Hold a mirror to the nose. Its sense is a rake or nails on the skull. Ancient tobacco, unwashed and warm ass, leaf pulp usual, butane leak and melty plastic. I carved some names in the fresh concrete slab, lifting my shirt to my face and repulsed, let go an abstract throttle toward an acid bath sunset, years from now collapse. I hope bog bodies continue to fascinate in that so far place, just to sit around in the evening's conjecture and squelch, collected and with sunglasses. Everyone's now on these drugs. Factor in wood grain, then it reads okay. Oh my God. We created an approximate cutout of raggy yet slick shambolicism, a desperate cheap glue that manages, sure, but its persistence burbles mostly harrow down a development with some good trees common name, then Euro suffix of sorts like villa. I have a garage planes stacked with unused hard drives, bulged tubs of paper, dry shrubs, scythes, alum shovels, webs fibrous, gooey. So do you feel that? Or do you hear what I hear? The beating of lambs? Wait, wrong poem or lyric. It's like medical strobing or unnerving asks. What if we're pen names? What is the space between horns? Press hand to temple, plug one ear canal, repeat for the other side, cry out with what's stored in the lifelong glimpse into strange windows at dusk, the unbecoming variegated shades of ill yellow and orange corporate in its gnaw. Kick the shit out of me. A mistake, too many syllables, wrong poem or way on one way. It's a car. It's a mountain. I'm spewing on both and forgetting my purpose here, to envy these fabulous blinds. I push a slat down with my finger, observing the seasonal rains. Red neon on plastic bags weighted with cans, two guys waiting on the bus. I can see my breath inside, but do not shiver. I'm not a butcher, but resound with flesh and the cool wind infection in the air tonight. Don't worry, Echo. Scratch that.
Reel with the horror, the daily haboob or tsunami waves or dry ground cover ridgeline. We fought, then were found huddled and naked down by the canyon's river. Oblivion smiles. I wonder at times of my own sheared petulance. Cordelia Street World. What do I despise? I will stay a teenager's perpetual gloam, very probably an expansive root system, yea, a sad entry of hundreds of reams of thin, plain copy paper, a suburban zine altered to a hearse. Yell to your horse, but nothing. It is a forced truce, a wicked head bonk. Here's the pitch. An office park that's overtaken by dull vacancies becomes the new headquarters for a radical anti-state cult org. We're living on NutraSweet packets and Keurig pods, storing ammo where the break room once bubbled with flirty and trite timbers of despair. In the spring, we pick cherries at midnight and deer, true grass growing through the pavement. It's a nice life, quiet, we have cells where we fuck and speak to each other in hushes, count the ceiling tiles. Then, a visitor with news of outside after all that has happened. So, um, that's <laughs> um, a bit of that. <laughs> Always, um, yeah, sometimes I, well, there's a, I can't remember, um, what's the name of the, the art critic, is it Peter Schladal, who was the art critic for The New Yorker? Does that make sense? Does anybody know? Anyway, he wrote this piece in December. He's dying of um, inoperable lung cancer. And he wrote this piece in, like, at the end of the year that, um, or right in January, sometime, you know, in that weird um, area of time. But he wrote this piece, uh, and in it, he mentioned that if he remembered anything that he had just written, then he knew that it wasn't any good. Um, and uh, I think that I really feel that uh, very deeply when I write, which is like really strange when I say that to students and other people, right? I, but I don't remember what I write a lot of times. And then like I'll go back to it and I'll be like, Jesus, you're really messed up, <laughs> like, or, you know, or like, well, you have a weird brain, okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, sometimes I read things and I'm like, I, if I seemed surprised at any point, that was why. <laughs> but, um, so uh, this is a new um, project, uh, the next poems are from a new project called The Economy Disappears, and uh, the way that I'm working it for uh, years and years, I didn't um, hand write poems. I only typed them. And I decided to kind of, uh, you know, uh, I resolved to change that state of affairs, I guess I should say. And, uh, but I was like, I can't just like write on a blank page. Like there's something that I find very intimidating about that, like with my hand. Um, like sit down and write a poem. Um, and so uh, I spent about a month cutting out phrases that struck me from issues of The Economist magazine. And now for each poem, I take one of those phrases or sections of a phrase and um, or fragment it out or you know cut it into different parts and paste them on the page and then write around those fragments. Um, so it qu sort of makes the economist and the economy um, disappear as a result and also has a nice kind of like effect um, when you're looking at it, you, like very interesting looking rough drafts, I guess. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where uh, this stuff is coming from. Uh, one, actually, there, I'm not going to say one, two, they're, they're, it's all just the economy disappears, so. Rather, it's what they eke, body like juice, consecrated in cellophane, doing trouble or a ditty. And if I should falter a living, a metaphor for a wall, damn libretto souping through my panties as wage or opening eyes wide and plowing through, will never be this young again. So thresh laborers in abstruse skin slaps, 
a parody, kissing abdomen, vitamin lips, cheap tile, cheap and nearby brick kilns, pumping out what slurs, epistemology that dances for money, boom boom or buy the airport extended stay hotels, I huff euphemism for sport each night, like paps took long walks and we only had one tub, covered in cum, distilling moonshine. Um, I should also say that a lot of what I'm uh, focusing on here, uh, just generally, um, and also the, a lot of the reading, uh, the books that I showed at the beginning, um, are kind of uh, related to uh, ideas of disgust uh, and uh, kind of in, in Ugly Feeling, Sian Nye uh, talks about how disgust is an amoral affect, right? Um, and, but that it has been utilized in immoral ways, mostly by right-wing um, individuals. So um, there's a lot of historical context in terms of like, um, you know, uh, right-wing and conservative forces, you know, talking about uh, disgusting, disgusting people and othering, you know, people, right? Like immigrants, black folks, poor people, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, what what CN kind of proposes and what I'm trying to like think through a lot in these poems is how from a non-conservative and a very radical left perspective, um, we can, I can utilize um, the affect of disgust um, and uh, utilize it to perhaps um, undo and confuse, let's say, um, regimes of language, if that makes sense. Um, so we can, if you have questions, um, feel free to ask me um, later, yeah. So, our spectacles reflect this terrarium of failure plinthed, effectively disordered, slowly in the branches rumbling, self as a deepening of blood setting into sofa fabric, canceled carpet daddy yum, a bus can count him, ping-ponging angles blubber, grainy footage, banter this global position thrown to the waves. He finds himself on a frame, slack blue, thus redoubtable in its smudgy shriek. Come and knock on a door. Who beyond the structureless salmon shorts of our despondence remains callous in uproar, age of 26. The wrong people approach the rifle. I love a man in traffic, men in traffic, tents in the clovers. <clears throat> Of apparent interest at last, matrix of skin, sure belt line, thread holding the formula. Oh, you reach your hand up to your next icky somatic guarantee. Lark of a neon slouch, lark incomprehensibly stable. It hailed an hour ago. Forethought's supple flesh ellipsis, dragging a suitcase stuffed with specimen jars and coordinates of the best rib shacks in the upper Midwest, leaping porno flask passed around post pew, a floppy torque of old Babylon and hogs destroying all evidences, weighed in the pond. Life were cheap candles in fog, the elegance of that genre, scratched lens and spit perforations directing no and no, this greasy strip and massaged water stains. Yeah. Um, so this one is in uh, uh, in memory of uh, the poet Sean Bonney, who died in November. Um, so uh, the problem he was saying is Chuck Banderol slobber aren't any papers in this our daily hibernation's colors. The problem was last seen everywhere the problem was, too inward to ever float, whiskers in a minor key drone more like a whale or a keen, were edges, come see, come sa, yeah. Later that morning, the problem was runny eggs or the morning itself. I tug at my left nipple, reading Notley by candlelight in a van, screw work, nuzzled burden of verse. There is no romance mowing the lawn. The problem was the lawn. Could not recognize the faces standing over me. 
Did you sing your chomps into your fragmentary subjecthood? Or did you unmute the problem? Was witnessed by a neighbor? The apparition that is melody. Tool de monstrous sin city dares the umbumpf in spectacle. We misremember words. We summon a directory of murmuring alleys. All our harms like weaver birds. Okay. <clears throat> I will read a couple more. Imagine directing assistants placing a painting of smacking lips above the master bed in the Zurich pied -a terre while your advisor says, the zeitgeist has lost touch with the data. His mouth's corners host a foamy buildup. I got fucked in a basement bathroom by some sinecuring fop from Dubai. Use this text to sell bottle service and expired film. Plague. Signified's never surfaces is a demand. Damn it, light. Damn it, graceful light named empire. Shrill blue fields and fields stubborn, yellowing. I king urinal and expanding void. Whereas that's my sleep mantra. Rapids in a canoe lulling route to obscurity's portage. A better way to say frozen ground at dawn. Or an epidemic builds wherein we need to spend hours in the woodshed. Emerging only to pour hot diarrhea on our careers. Ensuring that a would-be ladder's a sawed tune. Really just hokum clobber prescription. Mm -hmm. okay. um, <clears throat> this one has some quotes from St. Anthony in it, too. <laughs> I quote a lot. Um, so, who knew him felt that ochre cast lethal thrum, fostering rankled substrate trench feelings, poured concrete, sod, institution brand cedar mulch? Go to where the Ikeas are. <laughs> Spritz acid in the meatballs. Purchase miniature plastic palm. Skiffle to the next destination. Thick stands of ditches and untended woods heaved as a party intermittent the western creases. Thus yearning a mite predictable, like everything else, like the most visible branch of the government is the police, which does much of the thieving itself. Then it goes circular, back to the pit, sometimes filled with rain, whereas not a grid, though, thought by anyone the game of tags, associative spindle, haphazard in its riggings, a conversation, ray remoteness, unseen hollow in the face prison to expect to be tempted, and also stillness lost. Hmm. Oh. Guns have slipped back into holsters and diplomats behind their desks. Leather fingers along leather, joy chamber scorching, dang it. It was God or a transformer exploding. Just the initial stage peeking around corners, smiling, goofy voice repeated yelling. A single pop from the valley, pallets greasy with pheromones. Reliable sources, mossy or flexing in sunlight. Vandal, coward, inform, rat. This mason jar of liquid LSD waylaid in the hills is one of the few slinks toward measure of the hearts, yet a fool scrapples the whole deal. It's this damn country. Left at first fork, drag your peepers, ubiquitous as this cresting wind. Five verbal assaults against family and friends. We are ever reliant on the nocturnal luminosity of information and its failures. Yea, the shimmy of the clutch, forever blowing abject bubbles stored as thoughts at cellar rear. <laughs> Um, he would sniff Ajax just to feel the burn, asynchronous to my youth in ditches, the gray matter of free will crunching its way through the forest of worship, haunt of clashing melodic intervals, self on screen not always so synced, but fun for a while till a fanatic walked, 
They all walk. It's why our scrambled intention to learn how to trach the horizon was initiated. Sadly, its execution was tragicomic, deeply compressed yet histrionic, accurate yet subject to the whims of the board on which we all opened fire. Damn Ambien, fucked five ways to Friday, keep it down, down, landed into a house that ain't mine, baton gauntlet, psychic skin, and where are my contours? My slop. Did you reel in the sand trap, rubbing corneas, slammed against elusive green? Right now, it looks like substance flashing from a malfunctioning squeeze bottle slipping on orange spooge, forgotten veins, sick and wearing unlaced tims, huffing gas, staging a coup on the bunny hill, attempt after attempt to avoid catastrophe in the glade. Like things cocooned in sweat seeking the river people, bad camp burning near the tracks, they say. If so, it will be yet more proof that the hugs don't work. Curses on his arms, admonitions from Hollywood sleeping it off in the tub, the deepening suicide of July, dust collecting on Serape, what seems evident is pretending the meals are going well, or finding maps back to the cistern, another breath method. Quick and shallow <laughs> isn't easy. It's questions of closets in warfare. Looking sexed up from one angle on the situation, correspondence with manic scorch, eyeballs, and lightning curtain. Okay, and this is the last one. <clears throat> Into the rapid arpeggiations trapped in breeze, necrotic flesh, the hound digs and digs, fade across water, gray reflection porous. What was the flavor? Ash and limes. Pretty good business, cautioned, pretty good business. Flipped our fart sacks under that arbor like a box airing up, and he's waggling his number out the door, frigid ideation, shaggy and waxing, mistake of our plane. Victorious on the lists, and busted kneecap, Capiche? Dipped in soda and flirty with a comb. Once you get the wound, there are other changes. Like the inadequacy of the modular, our rousting yet we cannot get out. Dear incursion on value relations, your name is Glenn and you're deep in a political thicket in a mid-Atlantic state, limbed with toll roads, sandy loam, you will resign. My jaw will slope ever more drastic. Gnaw of night. Thank you.